So yeah, our event is going to be this weekend, September 7th and 8th at Drum Sheds, which is a fantastic venue uh, mm. in North London. And for the first time, we're bringing Product Earth to, to the city, to our capital city. So I guess showcase, you know, UK cannabis and natural medicines culture to the rest of the world. Calling all earthlings. <laughs> the UK's best known wellness and plant medicine expo, Product Earth, is back for 2024. This time with a new London venue. We catch up with the show's co-founder, Gavin Sathianathan, to find out what's new for this year's event. Hello and welcome to the Lobster Pot Podcast. I'm Dave Barton. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but uh, I'm looking forward to this particular interview because it ties in with a show that's coming up very soon. I've got Gavin Sathianathan, who's uh, the co-founder and uh, director at Product Earth, which is happening this weekend, 7th and 8th of September in London. How are you doing, Gavin? Good to have you on the show. I'm good, thanks, Dave. How are you? I'm all right. I'm just kind of like, <sighs> September now. And it's like, mm-hmm. uh, summer's gone, grey skies. It's like, uh, yeah. trying to get back into things. But uh, yeah, yeah. it's good to have something right at the start of the kind of normal times that, you know, uh, to look forward to, which is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so many of the shows that seem to be sort of, sort of April, May, June, July, sort of summer, sort of spring vibes. But this one's kind of autumn, which is cool. But Tell us a little bit more about what's coming up because we've got yeah. a change of venue for Product Earth this year. Because before, well, I went last year and it was uh, in a little place in Coventry. I can't remember what it's called, but it was a nice kind of venue. But this will be something mm. a little bit different and uh, things are sort of changing up a bit. So t- tell us what we're, yeah, change we're of in venue, store. Yeah. Change of date, change of um, vibe, I guess, uh, at Product Earth. But I think nothing more than reflecting what's happening in the global cannabis industry is uh, as markets sort of mature around the world. So yeah, our event is going to be this weekend, September 7th and 8th at Drum Sheds, which is a fantastic venue uh, mm. in North London. Um, <clears throat> and for the first time, we're bringing Product Earth to, to the city, to our capital city. So I guess showcase, you know, UK cannabis and natural medicines culture to the rest of the world. Um, but also I think to draw in um, a much larger crowd would hope to hope to increase our footfall. Um, you mentioned that we were in, in Coventry. We were in a venue called um, the National Agricultural Exhibition Centre, um, which was a sort of huge, expansive estate, um, mm. really set up for what we were trying to deliver in terms of a, a trade show with businesses to come and exhibit their products and services, educational seminars and speeches and panels and debates about what's happening in the industry. Uh, and then a sort of amazing entertainment experience uh, comprised of music and food demos and all sorts of um, other immersive things that people want to do. Um, and camping played a big role in our in our weekend mm. out in the countryside. Um, but I guess, you know, as, as our industry has changed um, and as we think about pushing um, on reform in the UK, um, it, it's always felt to me that having a... Uh, you know, a festival in the middle of the country in August is a very is going to have a very different impact to having a um, a show in London, the capital city, when, as you say, people are back to school, back to work. Yeah. You know, we've got people here. Um, so I'm I'm hoping that by hosting Product Earth in the capital city, we uh, raise awareness about what's mm-hmm. happening in in the cannabis industry broadly, um, <clears throat> and we can start to you know affect change um, in a way that reflects what we're seeing in other European countries at the moment. Yeah, I mean, again, it's uh, we do need some change here. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, I mean, it always just kind of stags me. I was reading that. I don't know if you saw that piece by Voltfast that Paul North put out yesterday around sort of the figures and you know to be anywhere near where we were predicted to be when medical cannabis, cannabis became legal ten years ago. It was going to be three hundred thousand patients by twenty twenty eight. Yeah, you know, six years in, and we're forty five thousand. Um, I mean, it's it's interesting. I always think that you know. Perhaps other than sort of product earth, there's cannabis Europa kind of here in the UK that has a kind of presence. Yeah. But again, it's a very different feel. Mm-hmm. What what again in terms of because again, you you have quite a long experience in the cannabis industry outside of the UK as well. How do you see you were in the US before, weren't you? So tell us a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um I um I spent some time in Colorado back in 2015, which was the first uh, US state to embrace adult use. Um and I guess I got religion. Once I'd seen, you know, regular Americans yeah. going to dispensaries and buying products for, you know, pain and sleep and mood and all, all the different ailments that we we, we recognise now, um, I wanted to get into the industry. So um, <clears throat> I came back to London, I raised some money, uh, and then moved out to Las Vegas 
Um, and uh, as one does, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> after much deliber deliber deliberation, um, yeah, decided to to to, uh, to to jump with both feet into the industry and acquired a, a distressed medical cannabis dispensary in downtown Las Vegas, uh, and then repurposed it, um, refitted it, started serving patients, um, and uh, was hoping to serve adults as as Vegas as Nevada moved from medical to adult use. Mm. Um, but when Trump was elected the first time round in 2016, he appointed mm -hmm. uh, a pretty regressive attorney general, a guy called mm -hmm. Jeff Sessions. Um, and it became quite difficult for me as a, as a Brit to operate in the US. It's challenging at the best of times because mm -hmm. of the federal uh, regulations. But at that point, uh, I decided it was not the place for me to operate. So moved out of the US, came back to, to Europe. Um, and I guess I've been active in the European industry um, for the past seven, eight years. Um, it's rare to have that perspective from someone who's worked in Europe and the US, you know, and things like that. But how do you think, I mean, we know we're kind of behind in terms of sort of perpetuating the narrative around cannabis. But I mean, obviously shows like products have helped to kind of raise awareness and, you know, but what, what else can we be doing here in the UK? What do you think that, you know... <laughs> I mean, when I was in Germany a couple of weeks ago for Hamcan, I was talking to mm. someone and they were saying, and I was like, well, what was the kind of magic number before, you know, medical patients you had before, you know, sort of discussion yeah. around rec use was made? And so it was about 100,000 patients. And I thought that was kind of an interesting, that's a kind of nice kind of finger in the air figure a yeah. little bit. But what, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, do you think that we can get to those sort of numbers within the next couple of years here in the UK? I, mean, I don't see why not, but you sort of expect there to be an exponential curve of growth. Mm. I, mean, I talk about the three P's when it comes to medical, so patients, mm. products, and prescribers. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that the patients are there. We have these vault fast numbers of 1.8 million people who consume for medical purposes or, you know, yeah. own data, whatever the number mm -hmm. is. There's a, there's a market here in terms yes. of patients. When it comes to products and prescribers, I think we've had some challenges in the last few years. Um, in terms of products, I guess initially it was uh, a very choppy supply chain as mm -hmm. most product was being imported. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, questions around quality and potency and effectiveness of the medicine. Um, but I think we're getting there on products. I think one of the things we're going to be talking about at Product Earth this year mm -hmm. is the emergence of the domestic UK supply chain, which I think is yes. exciting with Celadon and Glass Farms and I think Dalgetty got their license recently. And you know, there's a handful of these players that I think are starting to emerge in the UK. Um, so on products, you can sort of see um, yeah, domestic kind of, supply. Yeah, you can yeah. envisage what's happening here, you mm, know, and, and, and the next wave of products, you know, pharmaceuticalized, finished products, standardized dosage, et cetera. That I think is where the sort of evolution on the product side is going to be. And then on prescribers, uh, obviously right now it's consultants only um, and it's very limited. I've heard sort of 30 to 40 maybe um, prescribers. There might, maybe there's more than that in the UK right now, but it's, it's in the tens, right? It's not mm, hundreds yeah. of prescribers. Um, and so there's a challenge. There's this sort of crossal point around who is prescribing. And I think a big shift would be, you know, GPs um, being able to prescribe. Um, but I think, you know, on the medical side, we keep chipping away. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what's really exciting to me is seeing what's happened in Germany around Grow Your Own and social clubs. And I yes. feel like that is the, the next frontier for the debate in the UK. Um, and I don't think we need to wait to 100,000 patients to get there. I think we can start those conversations yeah. now. No, uh, absolutely. I think it's interesting because, again, I was reading a piece talking about, you know, the increase in kind of, again, as Germany has uh, opened up and to wreck, it's now easier to kind of, I guess it takes a lot of the stigma and hassle away from the kind of medical market. And there's kind yeah. of this pseudo recreational market sort of creeping mm -hmm. in, which seems like an interesting idea. Yeah. But again, I guess in order for cannabis to be more easily accessible, whether for medical or recreational use, there needs to be that kind of, well, again, in Germany, when I went there, there was there was nowhere to kind of purchase. Well, there was, but it was no kind of like a you know legitimate source. It wasn't like a dispensary mm -hmm. or, you know, anything. Yeah. To get. So again, it was, you know, we need to have that sort of balance sort of cal yeah. calibrated a bit more to kind of ensure that, oh, if it's easier to get medical, then that mm -hmm. makes it more acceptable, therefore. And I feel like that, for me, still feels key, that kind of robust medical market before we can kind of get into discussions around REC. But again, it's just I, interesting I, to see how that shapes up. Yeah, and there are, you know, there are differences within the, the medical market as well, obviously, mm. for, you know, children with epilepsy it's a very different type of healthcare experience that they require compared to someone who is 
coming from 20, 30 years of consuming mm. cannabis and, you know, now wanting to get a prescription. But that's, I guess that's the kind of both sublime and ridiculous thing about it. It's kind of like, how can it be saving children's lives, the same product, mm -hmm. and it's good to have on a Friday night, as in, yeah. you know? It's, yeah. again, I guess it's that whole, that again, the broad spectrum, you know, pun intended, of, uh, of cannabis use that um, it's, it's, kind it's, of, it's hard for people to fathom. Exactly. That's what makes it confusing, that it fits in all these different use cases and regulatory frameworks, and it's very difficult. Mm. There's no kind of, you know, clear-cut uh approach depending on where you are because it has so many different uses absolutely and how do you do you feel that kind of is reflected in products earth in terms of you know the, the sort of uh exhibitors you have and you know the speakers as well yeah i mean it's been an interesting journey at product earth we started off our first show was in 2015 um <clears throat> so obviously prior to any sort of medical framework um and it was a very um community centered event you know we had lots of patients um lots of the social clubs um mm -hmm. early on um but i i often say to people you know once you get into well, i guess my entrance here was through cannabis as a medicine um but then i very quickly learned about cannabis as a food mm -hmm. uh, and then you learn about cannabis as an energy source and as a building material and as a textile and 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 right and so mm -hmm. um 2019 was really the first time that we broadened product earth to fully embrace hemp so we partnered with the British Hemp Association back in 2019. It also coincided with the, with the first time we'd moved to the National Agricultural Exhibition Centre. And we chose this venue in the middle of the country very deliberately because the mm -hmm. National Farmers Union was based there. Right. So part of our intent by going to uh, Coventry, Warwickshire, was to educate farmers about the benefits of hemp in partnership with the British Hemp Association. Um, roll forward five years, I guess we've now started to look at... Um, other types of medicines, you know, mm. cannabis as a medicine has been an on ramp for many people into psilocybin as a medicine, MDMA as a medicine, ketamine as a medicine, etc. Uh, as well as adaptions and nootropics and the sort of broader consumer shift towards non pharmaceuticalized treatments. Um, and that's really the path that we've followed at, at Product Earth. So I'm, I guess we're trying to contextualize cannabis mm -hmm. uh, yes. as, as one of the family of natural medicines. Yeah. Um, and and by doing that, we hope we can destigmatize the conversation around cannabis by saying, look, actually, these are treatment modalities that have been used for uh, centuries, if not millennia, um, in different parts of the world. Um, and we're just rediscovering what we've known for, for many years here. Absolutely. And I mean, in terms of, I guess, the sort of people, the sort of numbers that you're sort of bringing in, I mean, how many how many do you anticipate this year versus previous years? Great question. Last year we had um, north of 5,000 people attending the show. Um, the capacity of drum sheds is 15,000. And mm -hmm. if we get 15,000, I'll be very happy. Um, yeah. <clears throat> look, we're in, we're in, obviously we're in London now. It's a very different mm -hmm. kind of yeah. setting. So there are 10 million people that live within a two hour uh, journey of, of drum sheds. Mm -hmm. um, we've been doing a little bit of guerrilla marketing on the streets of London uh, mm -hmm. over the last few weeks. Uh, and the reception to our proposition generally mm -hmm. is is positive. So yeah. I think it's a question of getting the word out, and we're hoping yeah. that we get you know word of mouth to travel. Mm -hmm. um, and so look, if we get six, seven thousand people um, mm -hmm. at the event, I'd, I'd be happy. Um, I think it's our best offering, like the proposition mm -hmm. is is the most refined. It's it's the one we've worked hardest on uh, mm -hmm. since the inception. We've got an amazing music lineup. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Tell us more about that, because again, one of the interesting things is, again, the sort of cultural aspect in terms of you know what's kind of related to cannabis, and I guess cannabis and music has a long sort of history, been complementary in that regard. But again, yeah. it's interesting that all of that can be brought together, and you've got some big names. Yeah. You've got is it Scott Garcia? Scott Garcia, yeah. Top Cat, Artful Dodger, Heartless Crew. Um, so a very London sort of yeah. feel to the mm -hmm. to the music lineup. Um, I guess, look, historically, we've gone mm -hmm. um, uh, quite hard on reggae and drum and bass and hip hop. Um, yeah. And that sort of fits uh, with where we were in the past. Scott actually has a, uh, a paper brand himself called Loud okay. London. Oh, cool. So Scott was an exhibitor at Product Earth last year. Was he? Um, oh, cool. And sort of loved the experience so much that he approached us and said, hey, guys, I'd love to work with you on curating um, mm -hmm. the music as you're moving to London. Okay. Um, so Scott. Um, you know, probably best known for the track, It's a London Thing, which again fits with, you know, our move to London. 
Indeed. Um, and that's, so, taken, yeah. that goes, that's back a few years. That's yeah, mid, so, mid 90s. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I'm sure yeah, I watched, yeah. just listened to that or watched it on MTV rather than doing GCSE homework or something. <laughs> exactly. On the memories. It's a London yeah. thing. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. No, that would be really, really cool. Yeah. Um, so I guess in terms of, well, obviously it's a plant medicine show. There's a lot of, well, let, let's just get to it. You'll have people who are going to want to openly consume. What are you, what are the kind of rules for people who are kind of you know bringing their own products? Look, so um, drum sheds is a yeah. is a licensed venue, um, mm-hmm. and so we adhere to the drum sheds rules. Um, yeah. And you know, patients with legally prescribed medicine are you know absolutely welcome to bring their mm-hmm. um, their, their their medicine, and there are dedicated consumption areas um, yeah, cool. for, for for patients. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Do I think there'll be um, consumption outside that? More than likely, yes. But, you know, having been at Notting Hill Carnival last weekend and seeing yeah. what was happening there, I've, I've said to the team at Drum Sheds, you know, there'll be nothing that happens at our show that didn't happen uh, on the streets of yeah. Notting Hill last weekend. So, yeah, no, that's very, uh, yeah. But I think, again, yeah, you've got to kind of, you can only police so much of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, exactly. uh, you know, again, make it, you know, accessible for people. And yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. So I'll be all right. I've got my prescription. So, yeah. yeah. Well, what I've got to maintain a clear ish head because it's, mm-hmm. I'm going to be doing the MCing. So this, it sounds a bit grandiose to say that on the seminars, but, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to just being part of that and sort of seeing everyone and sort of listening into all the different talks. You're everything from, I don't know, stuff to do with everything from, well, I'm doing one on sort of content and the importance of that. And it's, and it's different things on the sort of history of cannabis and nootropics and, you know, yes. sex aids, all kind of stuff. I, I am particularly so excited about interesting. the sexual, I'm particularly excited about the sexual wellness uh, because it's not something that we've really covered um, yeah. at Product Earth, but we have uh, for the first time some, yeah. sort of, you know, sexual wellness exhibitors who are coming yeah. over from, from Germany, I, never I like mind. I like your term better, sexual wellness, rather than my term, sexual AIDS, because obviously that sounds different. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying. But yeah, no, 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 it's, it's going to yeah. be a real mixed bag of stuff. And it's going to be really interesting to sort of see, you know, ooh, all of these different things still fit in the same sort of category. And I think, again, as we were saying, it's confusing for people. They don't always think, hang on, why is it that? I can use it for that. And it's I this think, as well. It's Yeah. In a way, Dave, the way I, the way I talk about it is... Um, yeah. You know, the, the legalization of cannabis is sort of inevitable and in a way quite boring. What is yeah. interesting are the second order effects. So mm-hmm. what happens in a world where cannabis is available? Right. Yeah. And I saw this in, in, in Vegas, just to kind of hark back to when I was mm-hmm. out there. Um, the business community in Vegas understood that they needed to do something because the sort of Vegas 20th century entertainment experience of like big brand beer, like Budweiser, and pretty crappy food and really loud nightclubs just wasn't cutting it with you know the next generation of tourists. Mm-hmm. And what they wanted was you know high-end dining experiences with Michelin stars and you know Ibiza DJs and you know Elton John playing music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they wanted a healthier class of psychoactive. Mm-hmm. They wanted cannabis. They didn't yeah. want to consume alcohol. So when we put up when we uh, built our uh, dispensary, a number of interesting things happened. The um, the art class down the street started to do pump paint while you're high uh, the chapel which would allow you to renew your vows would mm-hmm. allow you to come renew your vows while you're high um there Good was, old Vegas, you know, yeah. yeah exactly so you know <laughs> you just started to see this being integrated into sort of leisure experiences i guess well, that's really interesting um, i mean it's i mean i've only i've been what was it i went to mj biz 20, 2022 and again yeah. that was the first time i'd been to a dispensary in the u.s and again mm-hmm. Going in, I can't remember which one it was. It was some. It was it was quite a sort of dodgy one, sort of you know near the Sahara, sort of by yeah. the stratosphere thing. So it was a bit down a heel. But again, you kind of go in there, present your passport. You know, you get scrutiny, and you have to get buzzed in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you get and you think you're going to go and see your uh, you know criminal uncle or something. But <laughs> actually, you've got to pick up the phone. But it's oh, welcome to our dispensary, and it's like oh, yeah. that's, that's such a weird experience. But again, I guess yeah. they have to be like that. There's so much cash they got to hold, you know, because they cash can't do and guns, runs. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, packing heat and it's it's yeah. it's such a weird experience, and it must yeah. just cost a fortune because you can't. Well, until recently, have they changed the law yet in the US that you can write stuff off? Or they're going to, aren't they? Yeah, they're going to do IT, right. I, 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 Yeah, 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 exactly. But um, again, those are not optimal conditions for running a any sort of business, I guess. No, exactly. A lot of complexity there. But but the point being, I guess, mm. to bring it back to product Earth, yeah. we've always been interested in the impact that cannabis has on culture, mm. um, and. And, and and where the cultural hotspots 
where mm-hmm. we find community, you know, yeah. actually. And so for us, you know, it was things like fishing and foraging and skateboarding and yep. BMX biking. And it's those areas where you could imagine, you know, mm. um, kind of playing a role. And so we're, that, that that's really where I think we're slightly different to most other shows mm-hmm. uh, in the UK in that we uh, em- embrace that cultural side of it as well, which is, I think, what makes it exciting. Uh, no, absolutely. Makes it immersive as a show. No, hundred percent. I think I think that's the crucial thing. It's the normalisation, isn't it? You know, like, oh, we could do this. People do this when they're just kind of sat, you know, fly fishing, whatever, just kind of doing their thing. You know, they're chilled, they're focused. It's just an opportunity. Yeah, exactly. So no, I, I totally see that, and that's I think that's awesome. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just thinking back to um, when I went to Toronto last year and thinking around again talking about the experience versus the kind of vegas experience of sort of you know going into these kind mm. of dispensaries which almost like sort of high-end sort of food or almost like it could be like a toy store but obviously with cannabis and you know and it's yeah. like the world doesn't fall apart we can have nice things without you know everything yeah. being trashed and it's no, that, exactly it's those sort of feelings that sort of you know when you kind of just put it in those contexts and seeing it as you say you know within you know your day-to-day life or you know or you feel the connection to it through, you know, an activity you enjoy. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I went to my first cannabis event in 2015, which was the High Times Cannabis Cup um, mm-hmm. in California. And I honestly, I felt I found <laughs> my, my tribe. It's yeah. kind of crazy, you know, as a Brit oh, to come from where where it was, mm-hmm. you know, in the shadows to to come to an event in the US where it was openly celebrated was yeah. really eye opening. So I, I describe what we do as a bit of a mix between. Um, a high times cannabis cup the mm-hmm. mj bizcon in yeah. vegas and mm-hmm. the emerald cup so yeah. it's sort of the love of the culture that you get in the high times world the yeah. love of the plant that you get at emerald cup and then the sort of you know business industry commerce piece that you get in an mj biz and we try to sit in the middle of all three yeah. for someone to something to everyone absolutely so what are you kind of most excited about this year obviously you mentioned around the djs and things like that you've got all the different exhibitors what what's going to be uh what do you think is going to be one of the biggest highlights for those who haven't been before for those who haven't been before, um, well, look, there's there's sort of three elements really: the trade the trade show itself. So mm-hmm. um, I'm really excited about our floor plan this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we've got some incredible brands. We've got for the first time, I think, because we're in London, we can now attract brands from the US and Europe in, in a slightly different way. So um, some big big brands coming from uh, Barcelona, um, some folks coming from the US. Sort of, you know, a lot of our um, long time long time exhibitors are coming back very excited about London. Um, The medical zone, which we started in sort of 2019, 2020 has grown. Uh, So we've now got uh, the likes of Cureleaf and Welford and some of those, you know, more well-known Cantorage, some of the more well-known clinics. Um, So if you're interested in getting a prescription, you know, you can come and talk to these clinics and learn about what's required. Um, And then we're also, you know, the the usual sort of um, seed banks and genetic companies, which I'm very excited about. Um, mm-hmm. hosting again in London um, and our sort of non-cannabis you know the, the world of adaptions and um, mm-hmm. nootropics that that grows as well so mm-hmm. very excited about having London nootropics yeah. coming mushroom yeah. coffees adaption coffees um, we've got cacao uh, on, on on the exhibitor floor plan as well for people to buy so it's going to be a cacao ceremony or something I was hearing I was yeah thinking. so the second element is the sort of um uh, the sort of w- the wellness side of what we do, which mm-hmm. is um, there's, there's there is a cacao breathwork ceremony happening mm-hmm. run by Rebecca Shaman. Um, there's yoga and gong baths and all sorts of things happening in in, in the wellness area as well. Um, and then the educational seminars, which you're emceeing and hosting. Um, there's lots of variety there. We've worked with Heidi Whitman this year and the Empower Her uh, Cannabis Society to to pull together a really eclectic group of speakers from around the world. Um, as I said, covering sort of sexual wellness and intimacy, all the you know um, animals and cannabinoids, social clubs, prescriptions, mm-hmm. um, ethnic minorities and cannabis, and how cannabis is con- uh, is perceived in minority communities. So, just a really kind of intellectually stimulating, I think, mm-hmm. group of you know bunch of talks for people to get stuck into as well. Um, and then the final piece is the sort of music, food, entertainment experience. So, yeah, over a couple of days, stage outside. Um, at drum sheds with, um, yeah, sort of cream of UK garage, um, but also, you know, lots of reggae, mm-hmm. um, great MCs. Um, and then we've got 10 food trucks with um, 
our, our food proposition has really evolved over the last five or six years. We used to do like quite crappy fish and chips, but now you know we know our we know our <laughs> audience like gourmet food. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot to choose from. So yeah, really really proud about what we can offer people. Yeah, I'm excited about the whole thing. Yeah, we can be no, cool. it's going to be good, and I hope the weather holds up. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's going to predominantly inside in drum sheds. The, the trade show experience mm-hmm. is inside, but there's yeah. there's obviously the outside area for, for the music and entertainment. Um, I mean, it's still early September, so you know, we're, yeah, we're a little, just a few, a couple of days of sunshine yeah. would be great this weekend because you exactly. know, exactly. So that's cool. But no, I'm looking forward to it. Um, people can find out more. Is it Product Earth dot Life? Is that right? Dot Life. life. Yeah. Excellent. Exactly. So you can find out and buy tickets there. And uh, yeah. yeah, any questions? We'll uh, pass them your way. But no, it's going exactly. to be good stuff. Well, uh, yeah, we'll see you there. And uh, thanks for coming on. And uh, speak to you soon. Thanks, Dave. Pleasure to be on. All the best, Gavin. Cheers. Bye.